Okay, I'm ready. Yep. Hi, Rich. Hi, Jack. How you doing? Good. I'm just I'm just futzing around with my brand new steam controller here. Just just randomly, I happen to have this in my hands right now. That's so weird. So let's talk about Halo Five. So the steam controller. Yeah. The the steam's attempt at marriage between two warring factions. You have your your console controllers and you have your PC mouse and keyboards. These are these are it's, it's like a star-crossed lovers from two separate families and they meet in the night and try to merge together. See, I think it's more like the fly. You take these two different things, you put them in the teleporter, and a monster comes out the other side. <laughs> this is this is Valve's. Um, They're trying. Love letter to couches. Their love letter to you know. So the the idea with the Steam controller is, what if we had the accuracy and functionality of a mouse and keyboard? with something you could just pick up and hold in your hands while sitting on your couch. Yeah, what if we had that? What would that be like? What would that be like? I don't know. I don't know I either. still don't know. Uh, it, it has a couple really unique functions, the biggest of which are these dual track pads. Well, that's, that's the whole thing. That's the, the selling point. Like the original version of the controller that they showed a couple years ago or a year ago, there, there, weren't, there wasn't any of this shit. Right. They didn't have the buttons, they didn't have the analog stick. I mean, it was just a, th a thing and you held in your hands and had two giant track pads on it. Right. The idea is that the track pads replace the mouse. And for anyone who's ever used a trackpad, like on a laptop, you, can, you, you know exactly what they are. You put your finger on it and it, it's like a mouse, but it's your finger is your mouse. Yeah. So some of the other things that make this more than your average controller is uh, the triggers have uh, two poles. They have a soft pole, which is like a hair trigger, just touching it, and then they have a secondary click. I think other controllers have done that. Other controllers have done that, but you know, if for anyone coming from, like for me, I came from the wired Xbox 360 controller, and I think that's a, a popular gaming controller. Mm -hmm. And that only has a one stroke okay. uh, trigger. Uh, the other thing that this controller comes with, uh, motion controls. You can tilt it. Not a very publicized thing, but it actually works really well in game. I like the motion controls. Uh, also, we have the, the flappers, <laughs> as, you, as you call them. Well, because you know you got the triggers, you got the bumpers, and so what are you going to call those? You call them the flappers, because you go like this. Now, I'm going to say, I think these are great. The flappers? The flappers are great. They're, they're a nice extra button to have in there, because as a mouse and keyboard guy, mm. I'm used to having like, like I, I use a number pad, not the full keyboard, I just use a separate number pad. I got like 17 full keys on the keypad mm -hmm. and then outside of the mouse with the, the regular, you know, left and right mouse button, the middle mouse button, I've also got a mouse that's got four buttons on the side. <laughs> so I'm used to having like 25 buttons at my command and for me, going to a controller, I just see the, the, the limitations. Like, oh my God, I got four buttons here, I got four things there and like, like I got like a third the number of buttons I'm used to having. Right. Uh, I like the idea of buttons on the back. My problem is these are large. Like they, the flappers take up the entirety of the backside. And so I found myself accidentally triggering the flappers when I didn't intend to. I don't think I ever really did that. Okay. So that wasn't that was not an issue with me at all. Sure. The other thing that sets the steam controller apart and it's both a positive and a negative. Uh -huh. uh, extreme customizability, is that a word? Customability? Yeah. Customization? Customization. <laughs> extreme customization. You, uh, I think you're underselling it by saying extreme. <laughs> uh, the amount of things you can change Everything, every single thing you can change. Not only is every single button, trigger, motion control, thumb slider customizable, it is customizable per each game. Mm -hmm. Like, like here's, here's the degree of, of customization you can do. Like, the normal analog stick, 
like you can, you know, other than the up, down, left, right, if you push it like all the way to one of the edges, you can have like the ring around the edge do an entire separate thing. Not only that, you can double the amount of buttons you have by assigning one button to be a shift, uh, a shift, a mo what? you can assign one button to be a mode shift where you press that button and now every other button does something completely new. You nearly double the amount of buttons you have with that. Like I said, this is the big pro and con. Ex you know, um, the, the, the vastness of the universe of possibilities is at your fingertips. The only problem is, the vastness of the universe of possibilities is at your fingertips. And I want to say... That can be overwhelming to a couch gamer. It, not only overwhelming, it's time. It's like, oh, I can't, I just want to sit down and play this new game. Oh wait, I need to take an hour to bind all of my keys to the proper controller settings before I can play the game that I want to play. And it's true, you only have to do that once, but you have to do it once for every single game. Mm -hmm. Well, here, yeah, yes and no, because for one, I mean, a lot of a lot of a lot of the games you can currently play with this haven't been built with this in mind. Right. So I think games coming in the future, they're going to have their own presets that probably take better advantage of the Steam controller than most of the games we played with it. Sure. So if you're not comfortable with the ultra customization, there's probably going to be a, a decent preset. Then, then you have the community presets. Sure. And people make their own, and if you don't want to f set it up yourself, you just, you just scroll through, and what, is, what have other people come up with? Yeah, that looks like it'll work, it's popular, I'll use that. It took me four hours of going through menus, reading the FAQs, and watching online tutorial videos before I could play any game with it. <laughs> There's a little bit of a hurdle. There's a little bit of a learning curve in messing around with the Steam controller, which, again, they're, they're trying to bridge. You know, they're trying to bridge the, the Jack, divide. Freedom isn't free. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If, if you want control over your own destiny, that's the price you pay. As a controller guy, this doesn't feel right. And, and you know, like, I'm, I'm a big guy, like, I have big hands, but still, like, the bumpers are just a little bit off. Like, you have to, like, you know, like, my fingers are on the triggers, you have to, like, stretch up to hit those bumpers. That, that is the weird thing. I, I don't know, I think, because you can, you can, you can physically see, like, the, the bumper yeah. much higher than the trigger. Yeah, the bumper is set up. And while it, it's, it's certainly not a deal breaker for me, I mean, it does feel like you have to move your finger more to get on top of this rather than just moving it over yeah. to the other, other controllers you can kind of flick but keep your finger on the trigger. For the Steam controller, you have to remove your finger from the trigger to hit the bumper. I mean, it's a weird design choice. I don't, I don't get why the bumper is giant. The bumper is giant, but, and not only that, the, the buttons, the front buttons yeah. seem ridiculous, like they're a bus ride away from the trackpad. This is, this is the compromise though for the trackpad. They, they need, what they needed was a thumb area, mm -hmm. and you saw in the original version of the controller, it didn't have these buttons, it was all just thumb area. Yeah. But then people wanted buttons. So you, they had to try and balance thumb, the trackpad size to button size, and you can see, you can see just looking at them that the Xbox buttons are just giant in comparison to these buttons, because they had to make these small and put them in the corner to make room for the trackpad. I, I found myself frequently going to hit the X button and my finger would, would end up pressing Y. Yep. Yep. Transitioning from the trackpad to the buttons is not fluid and it's not natural. Some of that, to be fair, could just be because normally on controllers the button pad is kind of above your thumb area. Mm -hmm. So some of that could just be a lifetime of moving your thumb the other direction. I don't know. I don't didn't, know. It didn't feel natural though. You know, at first when they when they switched the design around before they had the analog stick and the buttons, when they added those in, I thought at first that that was just a kind of a compromise to ease in the people who are used to using a regular controller. But now I'm I'm thinking that maybe that's not a compromise. Maybe that's just kind of an acknowledgement of the failure of the the trackpads. There is a problem. 
there is a sensitivity problem with the Steam controller. Where it's true, you can get incredibly accurate, but you need to turn the sensitivity way down. And then, you know, you get that fine mouse movement of, the, of, of your thumb, but then you, you can't look around, you can't turn. So then you turn the sensitivity up a little bit and then you can turn just fine, but then you can't aim properly. There, there was a, there, it was too much of one thing or not enough of the other. Did you play around with the trackball settings? much because you can turn like the trackball all the way up and then but then the turn you gotta do that like that spin where you're not you're you just it's like a leap of faith <laughs> just just turning around that is a leap of faith exactly. spin well oh oh no i've gone i've turned around too much i might, might as well make the whole 360 and that'll <laughs> that'll write me it was <laughs> even with a controller uh, again completely admitting that a mouse is more accurate. Yeah, yeah. With the controller, when you press left, you move in a straight, even line. You can mentally make those calculations to where your cursor will end up at the end of, or in the middle of that curve. Mm -hmm. A mouse, of course, you can get there really quickly, but with the controller, nice, even, straight lines. With the trackpad, it's all over the place. It's just like having a very tiny mouse pad. <laughs> Now, in a, in a first-person shooter, when you use a mouse, you have this incredible machine controlling the mouse. Yes. Complete, full range of motions, large movements, small movements, fine motor skills, mixed in with a, a neural network that's faster than any supercomputer. You have like a hundred muscles in the arm. You got the everything, the fine control with the wrist, your fingers are doing things with the mouse, you get the big motion and then the subtle, you move the fingers a bit, and this is all th your big fat thumb. Basically, you're, you're, you're trying to do this fine motion with, with what is essentially a, just a clamp. <laughs> this thing, this thing was built to grab bananas. This can't control nothing. Like my overwhelming concern with this was was shooters, first person shooters. Because the one thing I can can't replace is that that mouse and a shooter. I mean, I need that that precise aiming. So I mean, I played a lot of different shooters. I played some old school fast shooters. I played some Quake Two. I played some Doom. Then I played some more modern ones. I played some Far Cry. Mm. I could never get this sensitivity to something I liked. Eventually, what I did and I found worked best was for the gross large movements I was using the trackpad and then when I needed to aim, I, I used the, the separate motion controls. Mm. I found that works okay. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, at the end of the day, if I'm aiming with the motion controls, then what's the, what's the purpose of this? Right. This ends up being pointless. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we're, coming, we're, we're starting to get into the negative side. So I would like to just pepper in a little bit of positivity, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. which is um, th they tried. <laughs> and I don't, want, I don't want that to sound like disparaging because I think science is all about failure. You know, you need to f figure out what doesn't work in order to find out what does work. And a lot of the next generation of controllers that are coming out are basically more expensive versions of the controllers we already have. Yeah and Valve is trying something new. I don't think it worked, <laughs> but we should applaud them for trying. I, I, I would compare this thing to a, a, a spork. spork. A spork is a utensil with the properties of both a spoon and a fork, mm -hmm. but the functionality of neither. You try to, you try to, you try to eat, eat soup, with your spork and you know you can kind of do it but there's gonna be some dribble from the thing and if you try to like like have like a, like a plate of like potato chunks with, with some kind of nice sauce on it you can't really stab that with your spork you just kind of gotta awkwardly you know kind of <laughs> scoop it this is a piece of hardware with the properties of both a controller and a mouse and keyboard and it, it doesn't really have the full f functionality of either it doesn't do either thing better like that well better that's the key because you know we played some generic controller games yeah. like like a rocket league or, or super meat boy or you know just just stuff that wouldn't even use the trackpads and the it works fine as it a controller. worked it worked yeah it worked adequately as a controller 
but it wouldn't replace this. A controller. It wouldn't okay. replace the controller. Like I'm playing Rocket League with this. Yeah, okay, sometimes I'm hitting the wrong button though, but it works. Oh, well, yeah, it works. Yeah. Oh, oh, this also works. I didn't need this. <laughs> and then when I'm playing a, a shooter, like we did a little bit of, of, of testing mm. where we played a few different games with both regular controller, the Steam controller, and a mouse and keyboard. Yeah. And, um, this fared about as well for me in a shooter as the regular controller did. Yeah. So what's the point? The, the big hope is that it, the, the couch accessibility, right? If you are playing your games on your TV and sitting on your couch, it's a little difficult to set up your mouse and keyboard. And so you pick up a controller and you got your controller and, and that's more comfortable. So you have a, a $50 Steam controller to play with a mouse game on the couch. That's, that's the idea. You could find this in a dumpster. There you go, I solved the problem. <laughs> I solved the fucking problem that that an entire, like a staff of 100 Valve engineers <laughs> did, they created this thing. Nope. I solved it with a board I found in the dump. <laughs> <laughs> I got a wireless key mouse, I got a wireless number pad that I usually, I, honestly I'm usually on the end of the couch, I got that on the, the arm of the couch. I could play shooters just fine from my couch. So rich. Yeah. Would you recommend the Steam Controller? If you're looking to play like a shooter from your couch, yeah. like, like on one end of the spectrum you have uh, accuracy of mouse and keyboard, and then here's your, your controller. Like, like playing with a Steam Controller, you know, it's just, it felt like somewhere in here. It's, it's not much better than using a regular controller. So if you're, if you're looking to play shooters on the couch, I don't think it's really worth it. Uh, if you really have some kind of overwhelming desire to rebind the keys on your controller and you're fucking too lazy to download like Joy to Key for free, this will let you do that in a very complicated manner. <laughs> That's actually probably much more difficult to use than Joy to Key, but I guess it would do that. It's not, I mean, I, I hate to say it. I mean, I, I had high hopes for this. I'm willing to embrace new technology. Yeah. So it's not like I'm afraid of change, it's just, I don't think this is worth it. If you've, you've mashed two things together, and it doesn't do the controller better than a controller, and it doesn't do the keyboard better than a keyboard. So I, I don't think it's needed. Yeah, and, and coming from the controller side of things, I also don't recommend it. Did you notice any kind of improvement in aim accuracy other than it just being a hassle to set up? It, no, I, I could never get the sensitivity right. And, and it, like, we're, it's an understatement to say you can adjust the sensitivity. There are like six different things you can adjust in the sensitivity category. Yeah. There's a million things to adjust and I spent a lot of time trying to find that perfect setting. I mean, if, if, if the Steam controller were even close to the performance of a, a mouse and keyboard, yeah. I'd, I'd use it every now and then just, just, you know, so I don't have to go through the hassle of dragging this out. Spork. Yeah, yeah, spork. 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 Spork, 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 spork. 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 spork.